walk into a mini dealership to buy one of these Anglo-German hatchbacks, you're greeted with four options to choose from. The one, which is the base mini with just 75 horsepower, the Cooper version, the Cooper S, and the top of the line, most powerful version out there, the John Cooper Works. But before I talk about this beauty we're driving today, let's dig into some history behind the John Cooper brand. The first Mini Cooper was launched back in 1961, when then F1 team owner John Cooper wasn't really satisfied with his Mini's performance. So he decided to fit double carburetors to the engine, 7-inch front disc brakes, a first at that time, and last but not least he also fitted the short ratio gearbox, which was another rarity at the time. Thanks to these upgrades, his Mini Cooper did wonders on various rally stages, and finally, in 1964, the Mini Cooper S won the famous Monte Carlo rally for the first time. Yes, I said the first time because the car won the rally on two other occasions. Unfortunately, 1973 was the last year we saw the Cooper name on other Minis. Fast forward to the year 2000, while BMW was finalizing the takeover of Mini, John Cooper's son Michael started a tuning and motorsport company called John Cooper Works. This company was also bought by BMW in 2008, and since then the John Cooper Works badge sits proudly on the grill of the most powerful Minis out there. Like Mini isn't going to follow the downsizing trend that we're seeing lately, but instead decided to increase the capacity of the engines offered in the Cooper S and John Cooper Works from 1.6 liters to 2. And while the Cooper S gets only 192 horsepower, this John Cooper Works version gets 231. And don't be fooled into thinking that this is just a tuned up Cooper S because the changes go way deeper than that. The turbo and pistons are brand new, the intercooler is bigger, and the cooling was much improved. Also, the exhaust is bigger in diameter and is less restrictive. And all of this makes this John Cooper Works reach 100 km per hour from standstill in just 6.3 seconds. And if you spec this car with a wonderful six-speed automatic gearbox, the time from north 100 km per hour goes down to 6.1 seconds. Do you want to hear what that sounds like? Clarkson said about the McLaren P1 that it's the widow maker. Well, I'm calling this one the popcorn maker. Just listen to it pop and crackle. And what I like the most about this sound is that it's powerful enough to reach the inside of the car without Mini having to resort to pumping fake exhaust sound into the speakers of this car, which is also a trend that's popular nowadays. Design-wise, there's not a lot in it compared to the Cooper S. The front and rear bumpers are a bit different. The front fog lights have been replaced with two air intakes, one of which is a bit fake. And then there's a small spoiler at the back and John Cooper works logos everywhere. It's the same story on the inside as well. You do get these brilliant sport seats, the John Cooper works steering wheel, small details here and there, and that's about it really. The car has three driving modes, green, mid and sport. Put it in green mode and the car will try to save as much fuel as possible. The gearbox will keep the engine's RPM as low as it can and the dampers will be in their softest setting. I don't know why you would drive a 231 horsepower Mini in this setting, but there you go. You have the option to do so. Then there's mid mode and to be honest, I can't really tell the difference between this and the green one, except for the fact that maybe the gearbox just holds on to gears longer. 
but other than that, there's really not much of a difference. And then there's sport mode. You can definitely feel the suspension stiffen up quite a lot. The steering weights up nicely and the throttle response is instantaneous. There's no noticeable turbo lag and the engine feels very strong all the way up the rev range. Leave the car in sport mode, go find a B-Road and meet one of the best front wheel cars on the market. It grips very well to the roll, there's hardly any body roll, very little understeer and if you know a thing or two about driving, you can even get this thing sideways through corners. The only drawback to driving this Mini really hard is the fact that even though you disable all the electronics on this car, the DSC, which is the traction control, will intervene last minute and stop all the fun. So traction control off in this car doesn't really mean fully off. Which is a really damn shame in such a car. The suspension is really firm and each time you'll put it in sport mode it's gonna be tough on your spine. So what I do is configure sport mode in such a way that I would have the suspension in comfort and everything else in sport. And that in my opinion is the perfect setting for sportier driving in this Mini John Cooper Works. The seating position is, as with all Minis, almost perfect. You sit very low in the car and you feel everything that's happening beneath you. The steering is electric and thus won't give you too much feedback from the road, but it's very precise and beautifully weighted. This particular Mini has a lot of equipment on it. Unfortunately, most of this kit is an optional extra. The majority of the base price, which is 292,000 Swedish krona, is used by Mini on developing the performance side of the car. The fuel average is pretty high, even for such a powerful car. We couldn't get it to drop below 10 liters per 100 kilometers, even without flooring it every time. There is enough space for the front passengers, but if we're honest, that's kind of where it ends. You won't be able to convince your adult friends to get him the back seats, no matter how hard you try. And frankly, it's kind of impossible anyway. Still, for a family with one, maybe two small children, the space is just fine. I think the new Mini John Cooper Works is a car worthy of its name. And if you step on its tail, it will make your heart beat twice as fast. I've become a huge fan of this car and I'm really struggling to find reasons not to buy one. So if the hefty price tag is not a problem for you, you should definitely buy one.